what's going on today guys welcome back to the channel for today's video we're going to be breaking down three builds i'm using inside the 3v3 arenas for new world in the upcoming update uh, that they have to release we're going to take a look at abilities that i'm using on what weapons and exactly how to use them inside some gameplay as we break it down i hope you guys enjoy this video if you guys do be sure to like, comment, subscribe at the end of the video. It's much appreciated. Let's hop right into the video. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the bow class that we're using here. I'm only going to go over the uh, abilities that we have. I'm not going to go over all the passes. I'll leave it up on the screen for a few seconds. So you guys can take a screenshot or refer back to the video um, to see exactly what we're running. So the first thing we're going to run, we're going to left to right here, is going to be poison shot. This will help us control area inside the arena around the pillars to make sure that you can defend one side or if you want to, you know, kind of push the enemies the other way, you can lay this down. It's a great ability to have to control the arena. The next one is going to be the evade shot. Um, I use this one for escapability um, when I'm kind of getting pushed or if I need to kind of get out of a situation pretty quick, I always use my back dodge and then I shoot the evade shot. If I hit it or if I don't hit it, it's still going to get me away from the um, opponent and kind of create some space for me in order to do other things or switch weapons. Um, last but not least, we're going to use Penetrating Shot. Um, this is going to allow us to slow people down that are rushing us directly on. You get a lot of melee characters that will kind of push you as a range person, and I always use a Penetrating Shot to make them think twice on exactly what they're doing. I'll show you in the gameplay exactly how this has worked here in a minute of exactly how we use this. Now let's hop over to our spear, which is pretty much our other weapon that we're going to use. So again, left to right, we're only going to go abilities only. Uh, we're going to use a javelin. Um, this is going to throw your spear, deals 125% damage, and not only that, but it knocks down the enemies. Um, another stun factor. Uh, the more you can keep enemies stunned in the 3v3 arenas, the better off you're going to be. So this is going to be one way that we could do this. As people are running towards you or running away from you, you can use this to knock them down to close the distance. Then, of course, we're going to use Sweep here. Um, when you're in close combat range, this will give you time to sweep the legs. This knocks them down. You can then evade, or then you could do more DPS in order to finish off the kill in order to win the round. And then last but not least, but Vault Kick. We use Vault Kick to close the gap. And not only that, but it does stun the enemy a little bit, um, where we can kind of put down the other abilities in order to you know, keep them stunned in that area while we pump out DPS. Um, let's hop into the gameplay. I'll show you exactly how I use this and exactly how effective it is inside the gameplay. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some gameplay with the bow and the spear, and I'll walk you through exactly kind of how we use it. So right off the bat, I'm just going to try to get a quick little hit off the bat before I go into it. You can kind of see I'm peeking the pillar. Definitely want to keep our distance here. I throw out the poison shot to kind of keep the crowd controlled. You can see it's kind of hitting for 140 a tick. Nothing crazy, but it just kind of keeps them there and keeps them thinking about what we're doing. Um, kind of rolling out here. This guy comes up with spear, gets me damaged. Um, thank God we have a healer. Um, I throw the, I throw the spear, knock this guy down, try to close the distance with the vault kick. Get a couple of hits on him. You kind of see I swept his legs. He got up. I used the evade shot to kind of tag him. Try to use my precision shot. Didn't get too much out of it. Um, kind of keeping on, you know, two on one. Trying to keep our distance. Trying to keep him behind the pillar so we can keep him really. Um, kind of locked down so we kind of know where they're at at all times. I come to the spear, I close the distance with a vault kick, knock him down, um, throw the spear, knock him back. He put pots, I start just getting attacking him with the bow. Use the precision shot here, get a nice little critical hit. He's coming towards me. I pull my spear out, get the vault kit to get away. Um, they start double teaming me. Thank God my teammates came up. I kind of go right back at it with the bow. Just trying to spam, close the distance with the spear, knock him down. You can see I'm just using the abilities, chaining them back to back to kind of try to keep them stunned. And as I just need to pump out damage, as I start chasing them, I use the bow. I kind of finish this guy off with all three combinations. Uh, swept his legs, then threw the spear at him to end him. And then just kind of helped my teammates finish these guys off. This guy's very uh, evades a lot, so I'm just trying to make sure I lead the shots to kind of knock him out and we finish off the round. Um, you kind of see how I utilize both weapons pretty quickly. One, to close distance, and two, to kind of keep distance or keep the bow, uh, keep them at a distance with the bow. Sorry about that. Um, I use the spear abilities to knock them down and then use the bow to at distance to keep the DPS up. 
Um, again, try to get him off the bat. Just kind of peek corner here to see if I can get a little bit of damage here. Put the poison shot to kind of crowd control. You can see we're controlling that right side of the field now. Um, they're all behind the pillar. They're not kind of pushing to our left. I see my teammate pushing, so I'm going to walk with him with my spear out. Try to vault kick. I miss. I almost die here. I got to take a potion. Uh, try to back up a little bit. Use my evade shot. May not have hit it, but at least it gets me away from the target. This guy starts to push my enemy. Um, starts to put my teammate. We start to go battling back and forth with the bow. I shoot the poison shot. I kind of miss. Use the spear to close the distance really fast. And really start to use all three. I miss the javelin throw, but he starts to get away from us trying to evade. Um, so I just kind of just keep on him. Don't, don't let up trying to get attacks on him from a distance as he's trying to run away and trying to heal. Again, my spear's up. Vault click, vault kick to close the distance. Sweep the legs. Again, use the javelin to kind of put DPS up. Um, pull the bow out. Use my precision shot, knock him out, and then just kind of go to town from a distance. I see this guy's trying to run around the pillar. I'm chasing him. Come around the back, use the spear, vault kick, stun him, sweep the legs, wait till he gets up. I did miss the javelin throw here again, but then I hit the evade shot back to back. Um, just trying to keep him from a distance. You can see I'm backing up, evading. He's trying to use his void blade on me to get it close to the gap, which he did. So I pulled the spear back out to kind of keep him stunned and keep him busy while my teammates killed the other guy. And then they came over to help me out. Um, so you can see how effective this build really is. And it does actually a pretty good job of overall DPS and evasion. All right, guys, let's take a look at our fire staff. Again, we're only looking at perks only, not the passives. You guys can always take a look at it or screenshot it so you guys have it. But for the fire staff breakdown we have here, the first ability we're going to run is Fireball. Again, this gives us an AoE damage. We can help push enemies and control which they go on the field in the 3v3 arena, which is phenomenally great. Controlling the area is half the battle um, is positioning. Um, number two, we're going to use Flamethrower. This is great to kind of keep a little bit of DPS at a distance. Not only that, but it does do stacked burning damage the longer you keep it on an enemy. So if they keep pushing you, the only thing that's going to happen is they're going to get more and more damage uh, to them. And it's going to be actually a lingering effect too. So even after they run away, they'll still have that burning effect. Um, great if there's people in groups or if there's people inside of the healing circle, this will help keep those things down and then the burning will also help slow down anybody who's trying to drink potions or kind of regenerate health any which way this is very good to have and then last but not least we're going to use burnout um, this is going to help us one evade targets or two chase down targets you can use this to fly around the pillar you become a human fireball it does a little bit of damage to the people too and it also gives a burning effect so it kind of ties together with everything that we have going on what i usually like to do is use burnout and then I'll throw the fireball down. And then if they're still pushing me or they're trying to run away, I'll use flamethrower to, to kind of burn them out. All right. Now let's switch over to our ice gauntlet. Uh, exactly what we're using. Uh, there's a couple different things here, but we'll start with uh, ice storm. This is key in my opinion to control the area inside the PVP arena. This allows you to place to control what side of the arena that they're gonna go to. This is also gonna slow enemies for us to help close distance. And it does damage over time, which is phenomenal. And if you max it out, the more people you catch in it, the more damage it does. Phenomenal thing to have. Uh, I, this is a staple. I'm not gonna change this in any build I have. This will always be at least one of the options unless it gets nerfed. Number two is gonna be our ice shower. Um, this is gonna help protect us from the opposite side uh, or somebody coming behind us or somebody who's chasing us, we can always lay down the ice wall and run away to create some space. This will slow them down. Also do damage over time. So this really helps us overall just slow opponents down. That's what this ice gauntlet build is. Um, the third option here, we have ice pylon. This is what I'm currently running in this build. Um, I do not believe this is the best fit, but it's up to you. I think any of the other three options here with wind chill, Ice Spike or Entomb are good options other than the Ice Pylon, but it is pretty good if you're using the Ice uh, Gauntlet because the more uh, damage you do with the Ice Gauntlet, the faster and more damage the Pylon creates. And it gives me another ability to distract an enemy. Some enemies will focus on this Pylon, which will allow us to gain an advantage of them for a two-on-one. But this is what I'm running inside this build. Let's hop into the gameplay and I'll show you exactly, uh, walk you through exactly how I'm using it and break down the gameplay. 
All right, let's take a look at the gameplay for the Fire Staff in Ice Gauntlet. Um, how we're gonna use this build is we're gonna use the Ice Gauntlet to control the area. So you can kind of see I'm waiting for these guys to pop out. They don't. I put Ice Storm behind the pillar because I know they're all there to kind of watch that left side. I'm kind of really controlling the left side. So they really only have the right side to go off of. Uh, as I kind of do that, I kind of get behind them with the uh, Fire Run. As I start to chase this guy, I pull out and do the flamethrower to give me some DPS. Guy comes behind me. Uh, we got a three on one situation here to clear this guy out really fast. So we attack him while the other two teammates are gone. Uh, they start to rush us. We start to put out a little bit of DPS. I use my uh, fire run to start chasing. And then I start to try to roast this guy. He's running away, trying to heal from us. Of course, we're going to cycle back around the other way as he's trying to heal. Throw the fireball down to get some AoE damage. Um, of course, our buddy finishes them off with his fire staff, and we just go to town here using our flamethrower on this guy, and we just melt him. So you can kind of see, you use the ice gauntlet to control the area around you, and then you use the fire staff for your DPS and a little bit of area control. You can kind of see the strategy along with exactly the abilities we use. So again, we're gonna rush down the left side, and we're gonna use the ice storm in order to kind of trap them. Not using it right away until I start to see him, and you kind of see we're controlling left side. They're all pushing to the right or pushing back. So we get to buy ourselves a little bit of time. And again, one guy pushes. We got a three on one situation. We just start going ham on this guy and really starting to put it out. Um, I use the ice wall to make sure that nobody's starting to push us. Our one guy goes down as we're starting to do this. We are at a disadvantage. So again, I'm going to watch the left side. You see it pushes them all to the right. So all three of them are there. Um, I kind of use my fire run. I'm in the middle. I get stunned. Thank God our teammate is there to make sure we're keeping him at bay. He throws an ice storm down. Uh, we start to use fireball. We're over here. We killed one guy. Now it's two on two. Uh, this guy over here, we'll put him in an ice storm. I kind of distract him and try to get him uh, so he can't heal, which allows my teammate to kill the one on one, and then we go back to a two on one battle here. We end up winning this uh, three to one. We did lose the first round. You can watch the gameplay all the way through but it's pretty much the same strategy all the way through on all three of these um it's a pretty much a winning technique controlling the battlefield is key here um definitely with the ice storm uh helps us really really manage the good time you kind of see now they're gonna go right side so we put it there and it holds them back they're not gonna push and they're not even gonna come left side either because they know we're gonna be coming around so we just start pushing them um Allowing our DPS to get close, I kind of create a distraction here by getting behind them, throw the ice storm down, um, really create some chaos. Then I just turn and melt this guy with my flamethrower because he's not paying attention to what I'm doing. He tries to run away, I throw him in the ice storm, just try to start attacking him so we're getting some good DPS. Uh, we start to chase him because we want to make sure we got that two on one ability. Um, and then we go back to doing work with our fire staffs, uh, push him, I get behind him, and just start to melt him. You can see how quickly and how fast that round went. Uh, this is a great build for us. I really think this is a solid build if you're a caster and you can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, but definitely check it out. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, let's take a look at our hammer build. Um, again, left to right. You guys can look at all the passives, take a screenshot. Uh, but first off, we're going to start with the Mighty Gavel. This gives it overheading leap that crushes down does 170% damage. Uh, I max this all the way out because if you hit a light attack, it deals 220% damage. So you get that extra buff by double clicking this uh, as you're doing the attack. And then we're going to have Shockwave. Um, this is great for stunning enemies. Um, when people start to rush you and you want to stun them, you definitely got to use Shockwave. It makes them stumble, allows you to get more attacks on them, allows you to escape a little bit further depending on how you're using it. But I believe this is a must have. And then the third ability we have here, of course, is going to be Path of Destiny that shoots uh, Shockwave straight ahead vertically from you to slow enemies down, and it kind of stuns them a little bit. Um, you can use this in various different ways. I also think you could probably switch this out for potentially Wrecking Ball, um, and or if you want to use Clear Out uh, in certain areas to make sure that you can create some space is also good. Uh, but I use this setup inside the build that we use, and I get a high success rate with it, uh, keeping enemies stunned and making sure that we're putting out enough damage. And the fight that you're about to see, um, there's a healer that is healing them like crazy. I believe they have two healing staffs and we're able to take them down even with them healing consistently due to the stuns and the amount of DPS we can get out with this. And then we have, again, the spare, spear. Then again, we have the spear. 
Um, this is gonna be the same setup as we used in the bow and spear class. Uh, it's gonna be the javelin, the sweep, and then also the vault clip kick, which all help stun abilities and also help us close distance and helps us stop people from running away. Um, this helps a lot. It's gonna be the same spear class I'm gonna use uh, throughout this thing. I might switch out for a couple other things, but with this build, I have high success with it. Let's hop into the gameplay. I'll walk you through exactly how to use it and exactly what happens in some of our games that we've won throughout the arena. All right, guys, let's take a look at the Warhammer and the Spear build. Um, this is a high DPS output. Uh, definitely got to close the distance here. So I'm going to follow my guy over here with the Blunderbuss and Spear. We're going to make sure we're trying to create a two-on-one situation. They try to attack our healer. We start to go back and really uh, throw the stun down. I'm trying to sweep the legs. I don't hit it. I try to throw the javelin. I miss. Kind of a little bit of rough. Go down and hit the mighty gavel. I'm just really starting to stun these guys so they can stop putting out DPS. Uh, as all three of us kind of attack here, you can kind of see us using all our different abilities to keep these guys one down or stunned. Uh, anything we can throw at them. Uh, sometimes the abilities hit. You make sure you're close enough to close the gap as I did um, here, kind of using the vault kick to keep us forward, make sure we're using our gravel hits. Um, anything that we could do, we have a three on one, we know we're gonna win this, it's just about uh, getting them together to make sure we're closing the gap of the distance. Um, you can see how useful the javelin is, it tosses them back and throws them away. We go to work on this guy with the spears. Throw, he's running away, I throw it again. Get him in the back, he's trying to escape from us. Um, we're definitely just trying to just get him and he's healing, he's doing everything he can to stay alive, but with us chasing him, he's not gonna get very far uh, with us stunning him. Again, same thing here. Pull the spear out, knock him down, vault kick him, and we just go to ham on him. Make sure we're pumping out as much DPS as possible quickly. Um, so really, making sure that you're using all your abilities is, is key, and you can see why we select the abilities that we did um, in order to stop them from moving or stunning them as much as possible. Um, it's definitely a big deal to us. So as we're going into the third round, uh, of course I'm gonna use my hammer. Gonna come through here, just kind of create a distraction, see if we can kind of get these guys to bait out, and they're kind of not really doing it. One guy starts to push. Of course, we start to do a little bit of damage here, make sure we get him stunned, um, utilizing all of our abilities. I get stunned here, use the vault kick, try to get a two for one with the spear, but you can't do that. But you can kind of see how we have a two on one here and we're literally just keeping them stunned and using our abilities as they get refreshed in order to keep these guys stunned as much as possible we kill one guy um we kill the second guy and then we end up killing all three guys pretty much uh between the stun they can't attack they can't do much to us other than literally um just try to evade and with our healer he keeps us healed and we just go to work with doing damage so for the last round is our, you know, we win this three to one here. We run the same strategy, just kind of get them to bait out. They're all kind of in the pillar. I kind of peek. I see they're all kind of sitting here. This guy was pushing. I stunned him. Come back, get the two on one here. Uh, he evades. He starts attacking our healer. So I go push him. I get his legs, get the spear off the javelin, get the gavel throw, um, stun him again. He's not going to get away from me. Um, definitely. If I had a better build on my armor, we'd definitely be putting out a little bit more damage. Um, so that will be a difference, but it gets the job done here with what we're kind of doing. Uh, you can see, of course, just using all the stun attacks is the key in this PvP. Because if you can get uh, a 2v1 and you guys can pump out massive damage, it's just absolutely insane. Um, so again, we're back to two on one here. Um, our healer is keeping us healed. We're just going to ham and using all our abilities keeping them stunned as much as possible. As they start to run away, we switch to the spear to see if we can close the gap with the javelin. Sweep the legs, stun him. He's trying to run away. We throw the javelin at him, come back over here. They're trying to two on one me. I'm getting away. Thank God for my healer, really helping us out. Um, again, just go back to work. Fire staff eventually gets me, but our guys end up finishing them off um, due to the abilities that they have. So. Um, you can see this build is pretty solid overall DPS. If you pair it with the right gear, you're going to be unstoppable inside of any kind of gameplay inside of the 3v3 arena. Well, guys, I hope you got some value of that video. I hope you guys see exactly what kind of builds we're using and exactly how to utilize them in 3v3 arenas to improve your win rate. 
If you got something of value of this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. It will only help us get more people to watch and help us bring more content to you guys like this in the future. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. We're going to have more guides like this coming out over the coming months as 3v3 releases and as they update the weapons. So I'll be sure to make sure I keep guides updated uh, for the best builds possible and what I think and what I'm using inside the dungeons. Uh, so I appreciate it and hope you guys have a great day.